Please, Congressman, it's good to have you this morning. Thanks very much for being here. Good to be with you, Maria. Good morning. So, you know, I just want to say, I want to get your take on, on how the hospitals are doing, because yesterday we had Ken Langone on, the chairman of uh, NYU Langone Medical, and he said, look, the media needs to stop creating panic by saying that we're running out of beds and ventilators. So I want to make sure that we're accurate. Is this is what you're hearing from your state? I did a conference call yesterday with all the hospitals in my district and around the New Orleans region, and they're all bearing through this as best as they can. And they, you know, obviously would like more ventilators. Uh, it was very helpful on Sunday. Uh, the national stockpile sent down about 110,000 PPEs uh, to the state. And so they're starting to see those. That's a big help. Um, you know, they're not maxed out on ventilators. But of course, you know, if you look at the trend where it's going, it, there is a concern in the next few days that that could happen. We were able, by the way, uh, to just get another 150 ventilators uh, through the national stockpile on Monday. So that's a good sign that they're going to be able to get some more ventilators out. Uh, everybody's trying to source ventilators on their own in addition to the national stockpile. So, you know, you see everybody pulling together and, and the hospitals are working well together to, to handle this surge. And clearly it's something to be concerned about, but they're all handling it and working through the challenges. Congressman, I know you've been in on some of these phone calls in terms of where we are. I want to get your take on yesterday's press conference because the president was so grim. I mean, he said, look, we are entering a two-week period that is going to be painful, that we are going to have bad, bad news in the next two weeks. What are you expecting? Well, you are seeing the death rate go up, and I think that's really what the president is touching on is that uh, of the, the spike that you've been hearing a lot about, people are expecting in the next two weeks that that's when that spike will hit. And what that means is, is uh, not only more cases tested positive as the testing is going through a lot uh, more effectively throughout the country, but you are seeing an increase in the number of deaths. And that's the, the biggest concern. And I think the president's just preparing the country for that because as the numbers in every community. Look, I've got a senior assisted living facility in my district uh, that lost already over 12 people with more tested positive. So, you know, you, these are heartbreaking stories. Uh, you're seeing morgues over, overflowing right now and uh, people renting refrigerated trucks. That's how dire it is because uh, the, the funeral homes can't even hold services right now because of social distancing. Uh, so this is, right. this is starting to become real in, in the sense of the number of deaths uh, uh, to the point where people, I think, are starting to, to know somebody in their own immediate circle. Surely that's tested positive, but possibly now that's also died from coronavirus. You're right. And, and I want to thank you for your leadership here, Congressman, because you've been, I know, right there. And, and now you see Louisiana really taking it hard. I want to bring in Dagan McDowell right here. Dagan, go ahead. Uh, Congressman, great to see you as always. In terms of a, a phase four stimulus, what is the discussion of that? House Speaker Nancy Pelosi actually raised the issue of undoing the cap on SALT deductions, which would actually be a tax cut for the rich in blue states. So is that really something that Congress would do to help people who are impacted both health-wise and economically and financially by this devastating virus? Well, Dagan, first of all, and y'all talked a little bit before uh, the break about all of the historic things that have been passed by Congress so far, three different bills in response to this, di to this disaster, this crisis, uh, just in the last few weeks. Uh, this third bill, by the way, is going to be a true lifeline to families and small businesses across the country. Uh, that's where the focus needs to be on implementing this bill. Look, just yesterday, the Treasury Department came out with the application form for small businesses, and there's always tr already tremendous demand. Banks are starting to ramp up, and maybe by Friday or Monday, they'll be able to start accepting those applications. That's going to hold a lot of our small businesses together. You know, unfortunately, Sp Speaker Pelosi keeps talking about all of those things that had nothing to do with salt, she uh, with uh, with coronavirus. She was talking about uh, repealing, uh, reinstating the salt deduction before coronavirus. She mm -hmm. was talking about the Green New Deal before coronavirus. She's still talking about it today. Look, we don't need another grab bag of Kennedy Center debacles and embarrassments. Uh, we need to focus on making the bill that we just passed, a 2.2 trillion dollar package. Let's get that to work for the American people. President Trump is now starting to implement those things. That's going to give families money in their pocket uh, when they're sitting at home. And 
uh, you know, adhering to the local guidelines, and many of them, as you noted, unemployed and, and possibly seeing those unemployment rolls growing by staggering numbers. Uh, we need to get relief to families. We need to give a lifeline to small businesses. We just passed that bill a few days ago. Literally, uh, as we're yeah. speaking, regulations are being written to implement it. So let's make sure we're focusing on getting that bill to work for families before we talk about some grab bag of, of wish list items that Speaker Pelosi's had for 10 years. Well, you're right, but you know, she's out there saying she had to do jujitsu on the program in order to get where it's supposed to be. I mean, she's she's giving misinformation about this. No doubt you saw the journal op-ed this morning. Pelosi pitches a blue state bailout. And, and and they write, Mrs. Pelosi's remarks underscore the potential for further political mischief and the long-term damage as the government intervenes to stimulate the economy. When Democrats next complain that the Republicans want to cut taxes for the rich, remember that Pelosi wants to cut them too, but mainly for the progressive rich in Democratic states. Right, and, and look, I think the, the biggest sign to the American people about why uh, that is a folly, why, why that is not the route to go, is look at what she did to hold up the bill last week uh, for the Kennedy Center. It started at a million dollars, and she held up the entire relief package, Maria, for the entire country, for every worker that's unemployed, for every small business you know that's hanging on by a thread and, and hopefully will make it through this. Uh, they had to wait two and a half days, not to get more relief to those families, but to get $25 right. million dollars to the Kennedy Center. And lo and behold, the ink's not even dry on the bill, and they go and lay off all their workers and musicians. Uh, that, that shows you what they really care about. The elites are only concerned about themselves, and they hide behind the musicians to get the money. The minute they get the money, they throw the musicians under the bus and pocket the dough. Uh, that's not what we need another yeah. round of. So let's work on getting this bill in the pockets, the, the relief package, get the, that money in the pockets of families who need it, get it in the pockets of those small businesses who need to hang on, who we need those jobs to come back. Right. Uh, every small, medium, and they large sure size business that's making tough decisions, we want them back. The bill we just passed last week is the ticket to making sure that relief works. President Trump is making sure he's implementing uh -huh. it. Let's put Congress's focus on right. that too. Congressman, thank you very much. Thanks for all your efforts here. Congressman Steve